Welcome back to the table, everyone. Today, Emily and I, we're moving in together. I'm oh, just man. kidding. We're moving in together in a game called Decorum. This is the next game from Floodgate Games. It's coming out very soon in mid-April. This should be at your local retailer. We've had a chance to play it we have. a couple times, and we're going to give you a little bit of information about it, how you play, but we can't go too deep into it because it is a scenario-based game. Mm -hmm. And in fact, with two players, it's a campaign-based game. Uh, and we don't want to give away all of those details, but they were kind enough to give us a demo scenario that we'll try to explain as much as possible. Right, so no spoilers. This is all demo. Yeah, it is, it is all demo, and hopefully you'll have a really good idea of how this game is played. It is... A very unique game. It's the passive-aggressive game of cohabitation. That is exactly what they've <laughs> been calling it. And it's funny because you're laughing at that and thinking, oh, that sounds silly. But when you play this... It does feel that way. It actually feels that way. It really does. The rare times you're communicating with one another, and there are some limitations there, you do often feel like uh, the passive-aggressive part you feel is there. It. Yeah, you, you definitely feel <laughs> it. So, what are you doing here, and what do we have here on the table? As you can see right here, we have a couple things. I'm going to talk about the house right here, and we have this set up on the two-player side. So, it's going to have a bathroom, a bedroom, a living room, and a kitchen. The game can be played with three and four players, in which case you're going to flip this over, and you have two bedrooms instead. Yes. I mean, I guess there's no bathroom. That might be problematic in any home. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> But anyway, at the top of the house, you're going to have a few things. This is a round tracker and then a little reminder of how that's going to work in terms of some of the things you do throughout the game. Mm -hmm. And then right here, we have the setup card. I'll get to that in a second. And you'll also see some of the items or objects, rather, that are in the house, as well as some room colors that have already been painted according to the setup. And right next to the house, you have all the rest of our objects. So this is the, the supply where we're going to take things and be able to put them back into the house. So we have wall colorings, wall hangings, curios, and lamps. And then we have four different colors as well as four different styles. And you'll notice that like this red lamp is a retro lamp, but the red curio is an uh, unusual curio. So they don't, they're not just hand in hand. You really have three different variables going on here for what you're going to be putting into the house. Yeah, that took me a second to realize, but what it ends up doing is it blows wide open the variability in terms of all of the different variables yes. you have to consider as you're placing things and wondering, wait, do you want an antique lamp or do you want a, a modern lamp, lamp? Yeah, or an unusual lamp it? or a green or a blue? It gets kind of crazy. The other thing we have here, which we can't show each other, are our condition cards. And again, in a two-player game, each of us are just going to have one of these. I'm going to put mine up on the screen right now so you can see it. Um, and I'll read the first one because we've played this, spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, but player one, my first condition says, the house must contain exactly blank, blank, blank. You see it down below. I don't want Emily to know this, but I kind of have to try to communicate that to her through the course of the play because the whole object of the game is for me to have all of these fulfilled and for her to have all, all of, of those fulfilled. Fulfill. Now, there's gonna be some things during the setup here that probably might help mm -hmm. in that respect, but some of the setup might hurt. There may be things in the house right now that I don't want right. or that you don't want. Like if you're looking at my conditions and you see my first condition says specifically, probably something that's kind of counterbalancing what you saw with David. Perhaps. And then you look back at the setup, and that also might be playing of an effect in one of my conditions. So it's all working together here, right? They've really balanced it in a way. So it's like your setup and our two conditions are going to force us to do things that we might not like for each other. Yeah, and, now, and there is a way to communicate that to each other in very passive-aggressive <laughs> ways. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second. So what are you doing on your turn? The game is unbelievably simple to play. Correct. Once you've had it set up, in fact, going back to the setup card, you're going to follow this for each scenario. And this is going to dictate A, which room is colored what. So right now we have these two rooms painted yellow, this one blue and this one red. And then the setup card tells us to put a retro painting here, an antique curio here, and then you can see all of these down here. We've got a couple paintings, a lamp, and two more curios. Now, like Emily just said, They've set these things up in terms of the setup and our conditions so that more often than not, I'm going to see one of mine and go, oh, the first move I'm going to make is this. And that might 
kind of feel like it's conflicting with what Emily might have on her card. So it's going to create tension and maybe some problems between <laughs> us as housemates. Um, but rest assured, these cards can work with each other. Yes. They're never going to give you cards that just can't work. There is you, a solution. There, there are multiple solutions. There is even. a solution. So with solution, you're probably assuming it's a puzzle game, and it is absolutely a puzzle yes. game. This is one massive puzzle that you're trying to solve together. And even if you had all the conditions in front of you, that in and of itself is kind of a Yeah, even bit of then a you'd still be like, efficiency, how many moves could I do it in? So yeah. it's efficiency, but also hidden information, which we're trying to figure out. Exactly. So here's what you do on your turn. When it is your turn on round one, I'm player one, I can do one of a few different things. The first thing, simply, is to place something in the house. I can literally take any of these items right here, these objects, and add it to the house where there is a spot. You'll see mm -hmm. in each room, there's room for a curio, a wall hanging, and a, a lamp. lamp. So mm -hmm. I could look at my cards here and, hmm, I want do. to, oh, my, my, mine are more negative than positive. <laughs> but you could place something like this red curio, let's say right here in this room. Again, I'm doing this not related to my card. But these are what you're doing on your turn. You're placing something or you're removing something. When you do that, you simply take an object that's already in the house and just put it back on the board. You can already see the tension this is going to cause. Yeah. Because in our games, I may have placed something or Emily actually would place something and then I would just remove, remove it. Remove it immediately. <laughs> All my hard work for nothing. <laughs> this happened a few times. And it's really kind of fun and tense at the same time because you're like, what are you doing? Um, but you can place, you can remove, and then you can also swap. You can swap. also swap. So you can swap between the same uh, type of object for different colors or styles. So if I swap that, I might say, oh, I'm swapping because I don't like red, but I want yellow. Or I might be swapping because the red was unusual and I actually wanted something retro in this yeah. room. And David has no idea what, what's what because yeah. I'm not allowed to say anything about why I swapped, what the reasoning was, and he's just trying to figure it out for himself. Yeah. Similarly, you can swap out paint colors. So each room is painted a different color and you can swap out, you know, instead of blue, I want this one to be green. And so now we have no blue rooms, but we have this bottom one green. Yeah, and the thing about the conditions are, some of them are pretty straightforward. Some of them, some they say like exactly two lamps in the house Correct. or two curios. Some of them are a little bit more complicated where they have a little bit more if-then scenarios where it's like you yes. only want these in a yellow room or this and that. So as you can tell with all these different variables and all of the different ways they can be combined here, it opens up a lot of things to consider. So those are the four things you can do. And then the fifth thing would be to just simply pass yes. and do nothing. That is a perfectly acceptable Which thing Which happens, to do. right? Because yeah. we might be here and I might say, actually, I'm good right now. I'm yeah. going to pass. And David's like, well, I'm still not good. So we're going to keep going. <laughs> but it is a helpful and it's that like light at the end of the tunnel moment yes. that you get. If yeah. someone passes, you're like, okay, well, we're getting close. So once you've done one of those actions, then you have to check to see if you're fulfilled. So... As the active player, I check my card first and I can go, okay, 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 okay. Or nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and I could say, I'm not fulfilled. Or I could say, I'm fulfilled, which means I've completed all my objectives. And if David fulfilled all of his, I'll look at mine and I will either say, I'm fulfilled too, which means we won, yeah. congrats. Or I'll likely say, I'm not fulfilled. <laughs> yeah. more, Good for you, David, but not me. <laughs> more often than not, we're not both fulfilled, obviously until the end of the game. After that comes the really fun passive aggressive part mm -hmm. because after that, the other player, Emily in this case, gets to comment. Now, the comment could be negative, positive, or neutral. Those are sort of the umbrella categories for these things. But you can have fun with it, right? <laughs> yes. That's the whole part is that, you know, I liked, I played with my boyfriend one scenario and he just said, you're not helping. <laughs> which I thought was a hilarious way to do negative. Or you can say, I love it, best thing I've ever seen. Um, you can really play with these. But again, it, the point is, what you did was either negative, neutral, or positive, helping both of us. And it's amazing. I was actually surprised at how thematic it started to feel. When, yeah. Even when we were playing where I would move something in, or she would move something in, I would move something out. 
And you really kind of started to imagine someone like saying, oh no, I want this lamp right here in the middle of the kitchen. And the other person thinking like, why are you putting a lamp in the middle of the kitchen? This <laughs> makes no sense. Not to mention, and we won't spoil this, but a lot of the scenarios that we played, we played the demo and we played a couple of the two player scenarios. They have some flavor. They definitely you know? do. So they yeah. have a little, you'll look at your objective card and or your conditions card and it'll have a little flavor text at the bottom. I'll warn you right now, you don't want to read that flavor text out, out loud. loud to the table because some of that flavor text is definitely uh, related or can be related to some of the conditions you're trying to meet, uh, which makes that a little bit more fun too. Yeah, I wouldn't say gave anything away, right? It wasn't no. like, I love the color yellow. Oh, now I want everything <laughs> yellow. But th you could see the connection, right? When you were looking at your own conditions and looking at the flavor text. For sure. So. The other player gets to comment. They could say, I really don't like that, or what in the heck are you doing? <laughs> or you could say, if you're neutral, like, I can work with that. Right. You know, like if they haven't done anything that affects you terribly negatively and you can still work around, you might say something like that. Once you've done that, you're going to go to the next player's turn. They're going to do all of those same things. Yep. I'm going to comment on Emily's, and then after that, you move the round marker. The round marker is going to move, and we're going to keep doing this back over and, forth. and over, back and forth, and the house is going to change drastically. And you're going to run into things where you're like, maybe I should work on communicate, trying to communicate this one yes. first. Yeah. But you definitely want to take a look at all your conditions right. because there's different ones that might be easier earlier, mm -hmm. uh, or at least to try to communicate. You could do a couple things to make clear, like, look, I'm trying to go yellow here, yes, exactly. so please pay attention. Um, you're going to keep doing that until in a two-player game, you reach the 15th round. At the 15th round... Heart-to-heart -heart time. It's time for a heart-to-heart. -heart. And it really feels like a heart-to-heart. -heart. Like, you've it been does. having all this passive-aggressive communication, and then you're like, all right, David, Look. <laughs> let's talk for real this time. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the first player to go first, and they will choose one of their conditions to share with yeah. you. And then based on what he shares, I'm going to choose one of my conditions and share that with him. So if he shares something about room colors, I might say, oh, I also am going to share with you something relevant about room colors. So yeah. now we both know what we're doing. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool because you don't have to choose uh, simultaneously. That mm -hmm. first player gets to go and it's very important to like listen to the first player and then go, oh, well, wait a minute, based on what he just said, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll share this. Uh, then you're going to take one of these heart to heart tokens and flip it over and put it on this side of the board. You're going to have two more of these because after round 15, which is down here, you're going to take this marker back up here. Yep. And then on the 20th and 25th round, you're going to have the chance to do two more heart to hearts. The whole objective is to get fulfilled, both of you, <laughs> by round 30. Yep. Now we've had, we were pretty fortunate. We did a couple, one of the scenarios pretty quickly. Right. Uh, I don't think with even out a heart to heart in that in one. The case. first one we didn't have one. I definitely had one though with when I played with my boyfriend, and it again it felt like a heart to heart. It felt like a, <laughs> oh now I get it. Yeah. That's why you've been working against me in this room, and now I see what's going on. And this is one of those games where on one hand you are just trying to complete it, so you can complete the scenario, you can be happy, you can move on. But they have a mechanism there to sort of like judge yourself and how right. well you did, and it's obviously based on doing it sooner. Mm -hmm. doing it faster and more efficiently. So if you're able to do it without using any heart to hearts, that's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. And you really, really won. And you can move on to the next scenario in a one and two player game. So the three and four player uh, operates largely the same as this. You're going to flip yeah, the board over like we said, but there's other scenarios completely. And some of them are one star and some of them are two star. Those are difficulty ratings. Inside these envelopes, and I won't show you the details on the cards, but you're going to have a setup card. And then each player uh, is going to have one of the large condition cards like this. Now, if you're playing with just three players, you're going to use three of these. But each player is also going to have three small cards. Now, these aren't really different than the conditions that are on their large cards. So for instance, I can show you this player uh, one card has the same three conditions listed, but each As of those, those are on one of these cards. Separated now, out. This is why. In the three and four player game, you're going to, instead of having a heart to heart, because it's not two of you, you're going to have a house meeting. Ooh. So it largely works like the heart to heart, except you're not out loud communicating what one of your conditions is. Okay. You're taking one of these smaller cards 
and giving it to one other player. Now, oh. that player and that player only has that information, and you still have it on your large card, so you, you, you don't have to remember it. Sure. But now you're sharing a little bit of information around right. the table. So if it's you, me, Ryan, now I know this, but Ryan still doesn't, and exactly. we're still all trying to get this house in just the right way. Yeah, so that's one difference. Another difference is some of those scenarios, not all of them, include roommates. Uh, and they have these roommate tokens here. These are going to go in the two bedrooms. Like we said earlier, you replace the bathroom with another bedroom. And at the beginning of the game in a four-player game, these tokens will be in the two different bedrooms. And you might have on your conditions that you or your room needs to have this or that. Okay. And when it says you or your, you just look and see where you are. Gotcha. So if your room needs to be blue and this room is blue or say red, I might move over here. The thing you have to remember is it's two per people per room. Don't want to so get too crowded. <laughs> if you move over, you're going to have to kick someone over to the other bedroom. Again, creating a lot of opportunity <laughs> for tension and passive aggressive communication in this I game. I will say, I don't know how I'd feel about you just kicking me out of my room, David. <laughs> no, that, that more than all the other things, that one feels a yes, little bit more sure. aggressive. If I was like, this is my perfect bedroom, and then David's like, Oop, nope, no, it's my bedroom. <laughs> So that is the game of decorum, the passive aggressive game of what? Co cohabitation. Cohabitation. <laughs> uh, it's got a two player campaign that's 20 scenarios long. It's got the three and four campaigns, or not really campaigns, those can be played. Standalone. Yep. Standalone and in any order. The other cool thing is, and we don't know exactly when this is happening, but later in the year, they're going to have an app that allows you to basically. It generates scenarios. New scenarios. That's so wonderful. people can, and you can even have your uh, phones at the table, and it will auto generate the cards to everyone that has the app at the I table, that. so that you can kind of can you uh, nearly endless amounts of content. Yeah, I feel like there is just like you just come up with new scenarios, new scenarios, and keep going. <laughs> yeah, so that is the game. It's a very beautiful looking game. One other thing is you should note that the, mm. the the game we have on the table here does include the acrylic pieces. Those are additional. They don't come in the base game, but I do believe they're going to be available for sale on their website. Uh, pretty attractive. I think they're like, I want to say they're only five bucks. Don't hold me to they're that. They're very nice. But I they're say. really cool. The yeah. game obviously does come with cardboard, but these acrylic pieces are some of the cooler acrylic pieces I've seen. And they're seen. slightly different, each of them. So they're similar enough that you know what they are, but even like if you look at the curios, they're slightly different from each other. So they have their own little unique artwork. Yeah, they're very, very cute little details. They're really, really nice. If you have any more questions at all, make sure and ask them in the comments below. We are not going to spoil anything, but if you have <laughs> any questions you think we might be able to ask, we'll try to jump in there and answer them. And until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.